I guess a lot of people think this is just another small community in the hills. Not to us. This is home. That special someplace that we all share. We think it's very special. Not only because it's our home, but because of its historical background. But this area is full of Indian legend, as well as American history. Take the Bridge of the Gods, the one that is just down the Columbia River from us. As in the case of many names around here, it comes from the local Indians of the area. According to Indian legend, there was once a natural bridge across the Columbia. Their legend tells us that the bridge was put there by their spirit chief, Tai'i. Tai'i was very happy because his people were happy. He was wandering in the woods one day when he came upon a poor, faded hag who was looking at her reflection in the water. Her name was Loet. She was crying. Resting his hand on her shoulder, he asked her why she was sobbing. As they walked in the woods, Loet told Tai'i that there was no way she could be of use to anyone. She was in the sunset of her life. Tai'i led her to the Bridge of the Gods, which he had built so that all peoples could cross the river in safety. When they reached the center, he told Loet that she must keep a fire on the bridge so all those who needed fire could come to her. And so that she would be there to help everyone forever, Tai'i made her immortal. Then Loet asked one more favor of Tai'i. She asked him to make her beautiful. Against his better judgment, Tai'i made her young and beautiful. It wasn't long before Tai'i's two sons, Klikatat and Y East, tried to gain the attention of Loet. Harsh words soon came, and the brothers started hurling boulders from either side of the bridge. Loet fled from the bridge in grief. Gigantic boulders were smashing onto the bridge. Before long, the great structure started cracking under the beating, and the bridge of the gods fell into the river. When the thundering and shaking was over, Tai'i turned each of them into a mountain as punishment. Why East was turned into a mountain on the south side of the river. Mount Hood, we call it today. Klikatat was placed on the north side. It is named Mount Adams. Because Klikatat was the elder, Tai'i made him suffer the most by placing Loet, the most beautiful of them all, next to him. Loet today is Mount St. Helens. It wasn't long after the Battle of the Cascades that a new industry, logging, began in the Northwest. Without the machine power available to modern loggers, hard work, ingenuity, and the ability to improvise were the order of the day for the old-time logger. Oxen have been replaced by cats, big wheels by the arch, early steam donkeys by modern diesel winches, and the steam railroad engine has given way to the more efficient logging truck. But perhaps the most important ingredient of the old days was the logger himself. He was an independent, hard-fighting, hard-drinking soul who thought little of the danger and remoteness of his job. Perhaps the individual that best fitted this description was the high climber who often climbed 100 feet or more above the ground to top the trees that were to be used as spar trees. Another of the more romantic jobs of the logging past was that of the fallers. Standing on springboards and using the infamous misery whip, they put down thousands of trees in a season.
Pretty good sized one on the wing.
The Wind River Nursery is only a part of the Forest Service effort in assuring the continuation of forest and wild country for future generations. We're now operating under what we call sustained yield. This means that for every tree we harvest, another is planted to take its place. For example, on this district, the average annual harvest is 56 million board feet per year. If we continue to cut at this rate, our present replacement program assures such harvests forever. The present cutting cycle is figured at 100 years, and soon it may only take 80 years for a small tree to reach harvest size. Harvesting trees does not damage wildlife. Cleared areas in the forest provide prime feed and habitat for deer, elk, and bear. Animals need food, shelter, and water. We try to maintain the proper balance of all three with good forest management. A suitable home for wildlife is one of our major goals, along with providing the timber resource for home building and manufacture of timber products. Seeds for fir and hemlock are what we start with. They come from cones harvested each year and stored in sheds until processing by seed scientists. When healthy seeds are sorted out and prepared, we plant them in nursery plots. Seeds rapidly grow into small trees within two years. Seedlings are thinned, weeded, and fertilized to ensure best growth. In the spring of their second year, the young trees are transplanted in clear cuts where they will grow until they are big enough to be harvested. Douglas fir are planted in clear cuts because they will not grow if surrounded by tall stands of timber. Clear cuts look ugly for a time, but there is good reason for burning them after logging. Burning slash reduces fire hazard and clears the ground in preparation for planting new trees. Slash burning is done in the fall when rains have started and fire danger is over. We are constantly concerned about fire, especially in summer. Lookouts are less used these days. The airplane has come into its own for fire spotting. Planes patrol during times when fire danger is high, making one to three flights over a given area a day. Road patrols are also used for fire detection and control. Increased road building and trail maintenance aids the firefighter get to fires quickly with men, supplies, and equipment. Recreation constantly improves as a result of new logging and Forest Service roads and trails built by the Forest Service. Right now we have 120 miles of trail in the Wind River District for fire protection and recreation. The Wind River Nursery began operation some 60 years ago, shortly after the Yakult burn, which burned thousands of acres in southwest Washington. Besides providing conservation services, the nursery produces 20 million seedling trees annually. Forest protection and management for today and for the years to come is our job. Forests are our national trust, and the man on the street, scientists, government workers, and the U.S. Forest Service and other agencies are doing their best to see that this trust is met. We have many assets in Skamania County, but we feel that our greatest asset is our youth. The responsibility of preparing our young people for the worlds of today and tomorrow is shared by the teachers and other personnel of our county school system. In recalling the uh, teachers that have made the most impression upon each of you, try and discover if there are common characteristics. Yes. It seems that each of the teachers that we have been discussing so far have a sense of enthusiasm. They're very interested in what they have to say and more or less live in what they're saying. One of the characteristics. How does a teacher convey to a group that they care for each member of a group? They have to take a special interest in each one to show in some way that they are interested in that individual. I think this goes along with our idea of accepting each student for what he is on a one-to-one -one basis. If we can do this, and it's a little more difficult in a larger classroom, but if we try to do this and accept each
each student for what he is and at the same time be ourselves. I think one of the important things in the many teachers that I've had is that they are consistent in the way they handle the students in both uh, respect and in the things that they expect from the students. Can any of you recall any other common characteristics, things that impressed you? In talking to students, one of the things that they react toward a teacher um, first many times is the idea of fairness or lack of fairness. I think kindness has a lot to do with that your attitude toward a teacher. If you feel that she's uh, understanding and, and uh, tries to be fair with you. Linda, would you pull down the screen so we may begin? Steve, will you please turn off the lights? Thank you.
live off the egg sac until the food value of the sac is absorbed by the fish. Soon after, they are released into the rearing ponds, where they are cared for around the clock. Upon reaching fingerling size, about three inches, they are marked for future identification by removing certain fins then released into the main river where they start their journey to the sea. These salmon will remain in the ocean growing at a very rapid rate for a period of two to four years, depending upon the species, after which they will respond to an instinctive urge to start back up the Columbia in search of their birthplace. Thus completing the life cycle of the Pacific salmon. We have all these things in Skamania County industry, history, forward-looking schools, resources, and unsurpassed natural beauty. It's a delightful place in which to live. The face of our county has as many moods and expressions as the people who live here. Special summer, day of life here, warm remembrance.